All systems go. Preparing for launch. Thank you for flying with EUC NYC Guy today. Please fasten your seat belts and push your seats into the upright positions. Be sure to check out the channel descriptions and use my affiliate links if you are going to purchase these items anyway. To Thank you. So please enjoy your flight. My Thanos glove is on. Hello, hello, and welcome back to another video. I'm back, people, and we have so much to discuss. We have a lot of work to do. First of all, first of all, we have a huge journey ahead of us right now to embark upon, and that journey is from the Upper East Side of Manhattan to downtown Battery Park, all the way on the bottom tip of Manhattan. That is a heck of a journey, as far as I'm concerned. I have a lot of exciting news to share with you, and that news consists of a few things. Number one, a brand new software update has just been released for the Insta360 X3. Now, I'm very hopeful about several things, several new things that Insta360 has done today. And I've downloaded everything, and I've installed it, and I've tried it a little bit, and I'm very excited about the results, but this journey right now is going to be a very important determiner of whether or not those results are robust and speak to me, or if they're just another crack at the goal, but not quite there yet. Okay, what are those things? I'm not going to make this whole journey about it. I'm just going to briefly cover this and then move on to another important subject. But, number one, I'll make it two items. Number one, the app on the iPad and iPhone for Insta360 camera editing has been updated to now include many new features, including on-screen display appearances, a variety of themes, and uh, also 4K 60 frame exporting. Finally, I was just about to sell my two terabyte M2 processor iPad Pro because I found it to be useless because I was no longer editing on that iPad because I just was getting sick and tired of only being able to export 1080p the videos didn't come out looking good at all compared to when you do it on a computer in 4K. And so this is exciting and big news as far as I'm concerned. Especially since I have the power to actually process all of this now on the iPad. And I can maybe move away a little bit from the MacBook Pro 16-inch M1 Pro or M2. I'm not sure what processor I have, but it's an M something. And it's really fast and good, but... The editing process on a laptop is different and I think I talked about it before but in brief it's because you can use the gyrating accelerometer to edit angles with the iPad and you cannot do that with the laptop because it doesn't have an accelerometer so you actually have to use the mouse and to me that's very cumbersome thank you pardon me excuse me hello um, to me that's very cumbersome and, uh, and now I'm excited to be able to do this on the iPad again. I'm literally excited. I can't wait to do a bunch of these coming videos on the iPad and see how great they look. And if it all goes well, then these videos should be looking even better in the coming days, weeks, and months. And they should be a little bit more palatable for me to process each video. Funner even, in fact. And that's a big deal because the tediousness of the processing of each of each video is a big deal to me and uh, it sometimes causes delays sometimes you see i have 10 day gaps in uploading and that's partially because it's just so tedious sometimes that i'm very busy and i can't get to the editing part i'll have tons of videos lined up in the queue it's not like I'm not writing. I, I'm writing often enough where I always have plenty of videos to upload. But it's just the work required to do it. 
And now with the iPad being part of the equation again, I'm very optimistic and excited. Okay, so that's the first part of the Insta360 update. The second part is the one I've been complaining about. Did they hear my video? Did they watch me? Excuse me. Thank you. I'm just going to get out of here. This is like a little bit trapped in there. Okay. Did they watch my video? That's what I want to know because I believe they have fixed the issue. Either that or there was a feature that I wasn't aware of and now I'm aware of it and I'm trying it out right now. And that feature is called lock screen support. Well, either it was part of the new update that was just done or it was there already a few updates ago and I haven't realized it. But either way, I updated the firmware for the camera and as soon as I hit the road and tried to do the GPS data on screen recording, you know, when I have the cool little gadgets on the screen where you can see my speed, elevation, and other data? Well, excuse me. I did that and then a lock appeared on the screen and it said, I clicked on the lock and it said, click this to keep your screen locked open when you are riding so that you can maintain your GPS data. And I said, okay, that sounds like it's gonna eat up some battery, but it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. So I turned it on right now, and from what I understand, my phone should still be on in my pocket right now, but locked. So it's supposed to be a little bit more efficient. It turns off the preview mode, where you can actually see yourself on the screen from the camera, which is very battery consuming. And so to me, I'm thinking, okay, this is, uh, this is feasible. I mean, I can, I can rock with this. So let's see what happens. So if you see data on the screen, then they did it. They figured it out and it's working. Okay, so that was my two Insta360 updates. Hopefully it looks good in the future. I'll keep you posted on that. Now let's move on. I said I had a lot of exciting announcements and good news. Okay. My phone was an iPhone X for a long time. I was kind of stubborn about upgrading because it was like a nice size phone with a big screen and LED and it had all the, most of the bells and whistles that the modern phones have. So I didn't feel compelled to upgrade. In fact, I was pretty resentful about upgrading every year. So like, I really stuck it out for six years and going. And honestly, I'd still be holding on to that phone to this day. However, due to all the recording and the editing and some of the things related to the phone where I connect multiple devices, to my phone it's been a lot of burden on the phone and I don't think iPhone 10 was able to handle it anymore because it would cut out it would uh, apps would randomly close and I'm sure it just didn't have the processing power and the RAM required to do all these things that I'm throwing at it now to be fair I haven't been throwing this much at it over the years so it's not like it's suddenly failing on me it's just I'm asking it to do more and I'm proud to upgrade I'm happy to upgrade if it's be, you know for a utilic reason because I'm asking the phone for more work and I need more power now if that's the case which it is then I'm happy to upgrade and what have I done ladies and gentlemen I have upgraded that's right I'm now using a bigger better iPhone with more power more data more speed and it seems so far to be handling the things that I'm throwing at it that I was throwing at the iPhone 10 much better. In fact, it's got longer battery life, which my iPhone 10 was already, battery life was suffering. It was giving me some kind of message in the settings saying that my battery needs to be replaced. Again, forgivable and fine by me because I was using it for basic tasks, phone calls and whatnot, the occasional video recording, nothing crazy. But now, as I said, with all these extra features turned on, like background app refresh for certain apps, like Google Maps, Darkness, uh, Insta360, those apps to be stable and connected at all times, this has all resulted in a pretty good lifestyle upgrade for me because of the things that I'm doing, namely, Riding, recording, looking for safety while I'm on my Sherman. Oh, did I also mention connecting to my Apple Watch, helmet, and veteran Sherman wheel? So there's about five or six Bluetooth connections running simultaneously from my phone to a plethora of other devices. And as far as I'm concerned, that's a lot. I think that's a lot. 
it's definitely a lot for my iPhone 10. I was having all sorts of issues as I mentioned so that's an exciting development for me. I'm, and I'm also enjoying the bigger screen size and the faster phone usage when I'm using the phone. So overall pretty cool, pretty cool. Okay, what other exciting updates? Other exciting updates include uh, me tweaking my veteran Sherman. I finally had some time to adjust some of the things on there. So I opened it up a little bit, cleaned it. I didn't open it up to the point where I removed the um, roll cage. Uh, but I did open up just a tad to clean things up, check the air pressure, um, tighten the headlights, tighten my horn, magnets, things that I've been meaning to do for a while and haven't had the chance to do. And now I just feel like I'm riding more securely. I feel like I'm riding a newer, updated Sherman in a way. It feels faster, it feels cleaner. I know that my bearing inside now has been uh, degreased and then lubricated with machine grease. So there's a lot of things going on simultaneously in the wheel that I wasn't really paying attention to. And I don't think I really had to per se, but doing so has been, has made me feel a lot better lately so far. So, um, okay, what else, what else? There are a few things, now if they don't come to mind right now, hopefully they will, whoa. Thank you, yeah. Pretty crowded. Thanks, bro. Okay, so just gonna take a ride with this guy. I am gonna head down Fifth Avenue. No, I want to go down Six or Seventh Avenue. I want to go down Times Square. As I said, I'm going to Battery Park City. Google um, Maps has been in my helmet the whole time. And you know what? Since I updated the phone, remember it was um, it was cutting out a lot. I was experiencing a lot of static. Well, so far, I'm pleased to report that the Bluetooth connection seems more stable. Um, I'm not getting any hiccups, and and the sound is clearer from Google Maps. So she keeps telling me, turn left, turn right, and all that good stuff. I'm kind of ignoring her right now, but there will reach a point where I'm not sure which, which way to go, and I'll probably listen a little more carefully when that time comes and try to figure out. I do know I'm headed towards 7th Avenue. 6th or 7th Avenue, and I want to head down that street that has Times Square on it so I can see all the pretty lights. And thank you guys so far for today for coming along on this journey with me. And uh, we have much to discuss and many visuals to see. We have a lot of fun ahead of us, so stick with it. Take a pause, get some popcorn, get a snack or a drink, and uh, let's do this thing. Or maybe an ad will appear, and you can see how long the ad will be, and then you can say, ah, perfect time for me to run to the bathroom or the kitchen, and let the run ad, uh, excuse me, and let the ad run. Thank you. And let the ad run. <laughs> so, I love how people are so kind and generous. They're always waiting and letting me pass. So, I don't, that doesn't go unnoticed. When you guys let me pass, I want to talk to the truckers and cars for a second. When you guys let me pass, thank you. There's a lot of uh, construction going on here, so I'm not holding this against any of the drivers. Okay, this guy has to go. Thank you. Um, yeah, so it was too tight for me to squeeze through, so I just pulled over. And that's how you be safe, boys and girls. Ladies and gentlemen, let me be your uh, fog of war clearer ahead to give you some insight into what it looks like to be on your EUC on these busy, mean NYC streets. Okay, uh, prayers for everyone out there to ride safe. Thank you for your well wishes and your kind words in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing and liking, of course. We just broke 2,000 subscribers and uh, I'm feeling elated about that. That's I'm not as like jumping for joy as when like I got several hundred subscribers within a couple of days. I think that's, I'm starting to become a little bit desensitized to that, and now you always, you always keep setting your sights. It's like a moving goalpost all the time. But I'm still pretty elated at the 2000 mark. I feel like it's kind of a good milestone to celebrate mentally in your head for a second. So I'm uh, very thankful to every single person who actually clicked that subscribe button. 
And if you just, you know, pop in and watch and don't really subscribe because you're very picky about subscribing, or I know some people who don't subscribe at all to any channel because they don't want to trigger algorithms and stuff, well, thanks for just popping in and tuning in. I mean, I don't, I don't mind you not subscribing, even though you're subscribing. It's amazing, and you should do it. But thank you either way. Thanks for just being here and listening and watching. Oh, look at all these lights. Look at all this beauty. Times Square. The place where people come from around the world to check out all this commercial glitz. All this glamorous advertisement, laden um, uh, lights, paradise of lights. Uh, yeah, I'm not overwhelmed, but I'm always still like a little bit awed by the massive screens with all the, um, hey, let's uh, keep your eyes over here. Um, by all the massive screens and all the good stuff going on here and for the most part it's a family friendly place maybe not always but for the most part it is one of the busiest most awesome places uh, anyone can really travel to so and the notorious stairs the place where people love to come out you can see that uh, and look at the standing area where people can like dance and do backflips there's always cool stuff going on here Let's do a little slow 360 turn. Check it out in all of its glory. Okay, um, let me not lose my train of thought. Okay, so I was thanking you guys. Yep, thank yous, I appreciate it. And uh, I was telling, talking about my upgrades. Okay, um, there is something you don't know about me that I want to share. And that is that I need a million dollars. I need a million dollars pronto. <laughs> Join the club, right, buddy? Who doesn't? Um, I used to think a million dollars was a lot of money. Let me get into this in a little bit more detail since I have been thinking about it kind of seriously. I used to think a million dollars was a lot of money. Um, but I don't anymore because if you would have told me as a kid, kind of as a younger person, hey, what would you do with a million dollars? I'd be like, oh my goodness, I'd buy like 27 things and... Here's a list. But now I'm like much simpler. Like what would I do with a million dollars right now? Hypothetically, a million dollars after taxes. Let's say I, I do something great for society and I earn this million. That's a big part of it for me. If I earn this, if I do something in exchange for this million dollars that's valuable, where I'm giving more value than I'm receiving, what would I do with that million dollars? Somebody writes me a check. Well, I better say somebody writes me a check for $2 million because I'm talking about a million after taxes. Because you know how that goes. So I think $2 million means you're left over with a million and a quarter, right? If you have a... Anyway, let's say I get a $2 million check. What am I doing with it? Okay, let me start from the basics and work my way down. Um, the basics is a home. I think I'm ready for a suburban home. And I've been looking and stuff. And uh, $800,000 seems to be the sweet spot for a just wonderful home. Okay. Uh, just a wonderful home seems to be $800,000. I'm talking like four big spacious rooms, a guest room, office, big living room, a nice well-done basement, nice well-done large attic with a family room, three bathrooms, pretty big backyard, patio, Nice driveway that can take two or three cars lined up next to each other. Nice garage that can fit two cars in there and a shop where you can uh, where you can have tools, like a whole wall. I've always wanted a wall of tools and like a shed, like a kind of a, not a shed, I'm sorry, like a, a workbench, like a place where you can line up four or five wheels and take them apart and have a bicycle on the side and maybe hanging off the ceiling, electric car, garage door where... If it's raining, you can put the cars inside, you know, or snowing rather. I think rain is fine. So just plenty of space. And houses that are four or 500,000 are cool and all, but they're mostly tight and flawed and not really dream houses in my opinion. But the $800,000 mark is the mark, I think. And, uh, and then the 1 million and 2 million and 3 million and even all the way up to $20 million houses, the problem with those houses, you might think, hey, the more the merrier, but no, I think there's an actual literal problem with a two, three million dollar house, unless it's just two, three million dollars because of location. But the $800,000 house I described is in a good enough location for me. We're talking a 30 minute drive from the city, 
in most instances and a very nice neighborhood. But let's say you go to a rich neighborhood. I'm going to quote air quotes. Rich neighborhood, $2 million house. What's the problem with that? That sounds wonderful. No, I wouldn't want it for myself, even though I know some people out there couldn't even live without it. That's like a basic necessity. Yeah, it's all depending on your income and money, of course. But here's the problem with it inherently and universally for anyone. Oh, gonna steal that. Thank you. Um, it's, uh, A, it's too much space. It costs a ton of money to heat it up. And taxes for a two and a half million dollar house are almost five thousand dollars a month. Now, even if you wrote me a check for two or uh, four million and I bought a two million dollar house, where am I gonna get a five thousand five thousand dollars a month just to pay for taxes? And then God knows how much to heat it up and or, or cool it in the summer. Because you know, gas is expensive and, and electricity is expensive when you have high ceilings and big rooms and all that. So it's just impractical at that point to me. I mean, unless, like I said, the money is flowing. But I feel like even if money flowed in in, in those sums, I feel like I would, like, maybe save it or, like, figure out a way to space it out over the future rather than, like, spend so much of it so fast. But who knows? I mean, when money comes in fast, you don't know how you're going to think. So, um, yeah, so big house is kind of a problem. The other problem is I feel like any family that lives in a huge house is going to have this, like, dilemma of, where is everybody? Everyone is in, like, their own wing, like the west wing and the east wing of the house. And, like, everyone's room is so big and the, nobody hangs out. Nobody sees each other. It's like, I don't know that that's, like, conducive for, like, good, to, you know, connecting with humans and stuff. So, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just trying to live within my means, even though even 800 is... $800,000 cash up front is not particularly within my means, so to speak. Um, and here's the thing. Even if you make enough money to get an $800,000 house on credit, aka a mortgage, I don't know that I would really opt for that. I think I'd feel way more comfortable just paying for it up front and not dealing with the sleepless nights of debt-ridden psychology. I would rather, I'd much rather work hard, save, figure out some way to make a torrent of money and then use that money on the things that I want. So that's why I'm saying specifically I would want a check for the $2 million so I can spend the money outright. I don't think I would ever want to take out some kind of mortgage. Thank you. And then uh, here's the other thing about that. Whoa, that's tight. I don't know if they're going to close it. Those mirrors are really sticking out. I don't want to feel like a wimp for not taking it, but I also don't want to get hurt. I want to get to my very far away destination quickly and safely. Um, okay, let me continue. So $800,000 house, now you have the detailed breakdown of why and how much and what everything costs and what it would look like. Oh, by the way, if I have a $2 million check and I walk away with $1.25 million and I spend $800,000 on a house, that's still like thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars a month in taxes. So it's not like I'm gonna pay the eight hundred thousand and then just live lavish without having to work or anything. That's still enough money. Where, granted, fourteen hundred dollars a month is not much, and when you compare it to rent and cost of living, but it is a lot when you compare it to ah uh, zero because I already own my house. So you still have to be making money on an ongoing basis. But I can live with that. The house is, you know, it's a, it's an asset, hopefully an appreciating value, unless it's soggy and de deteriorating, in which case you have to uh, consider expenses and overhead. But again, in fantasy land, the, the one we're discussing right now, the $800,000 house is freshly renovated, very spacious, in great shape, and appreciating in value every day. Uh, every year. Every year. Let's be fair. Let's be, like, realistic here. Okay. And maybe it's not appreciating that much, but maybe just enough to cover the taxes you're paying and maybe a little more so that if you sell it one day, you do walk away with a nice little, I don't know, a couple hundred K profit or something. Anyway, don't care about that. That's kind of far down the line. So the 1.25, 800 of it goes to the house and maybe another 200,000 you're putting that aside for the next however many years of taxes that covers. That way you're at least comfortable. 
and while you're working in the process you're still able to save because you have that little bit of overhead okay so eight hundred thousand um, two hundred in the pocket for expenses like roof repairs and taxes and now I'm left with point twenty five or two hundred fifty thousand I know I said a million at first and now I've upgraded it to 1.25 but play along with me humor me entertain me here huh come on okay so I have 250k left I make the rules okay um, so I got the two million dollar check I bought the lovely lovely house I closed on it cash I'm moving in my furniture things are looking good I've got extra money just in case and now I still have 250 that I still haven't spent what am I spending that 250 on okay next up is dream car now I'm not a fancy guy okay I don't want a Ferrari or a Lamborghini I just want an X3 a BMW X3 that has all the bells and whistles like the uh, M Sport package and all that good stuff Ooh, it's kind of bumpy here I'm in the village now I think um, I'm headed towards that big building right there turn left onto Bleecker Street okay you got it whoa Buddy, you got space over there, man. Okay. Um, it's getting crazy out here, people. Don't try this at home, fellow riders. Be safe. Okay, the 250000 I won't even get a brand new X3 M package. Because, by the way, the M package just makes the X3 faster. And if you're not familiar with cars, it's kind of like this <laughs> SUV right in front of me here. But it's a BMW. It just looks like a nice little chunky turtle family car, but it's not huge. It's not a big gas guzzling Jeep style SUV like the X5. It's the X3. It's it's little. I'll probably see one around here soon, and if I do, I'll point to it. But the M means it's the sport package with the extra power and all that good stuff, okay? Um, yeah. By the way, I almost got robbed on this corner right here by that big flower pot. Um, I'll tell you that story on another video. Just remember this spot. Let's call it the Houston Headphone Fiasco. The AirPod Max Fiasco. I must tell you about it. It's an interesting story. And you might learn something for it to help yourself out later. Yeah, I don't like the bike lane because I feel like stifled here. But where's Bleecker? Did I pass Bleecker already? Okay, remaining 250000 Like I said, I won't go for the brand new 80, 80, 90 thousand dollar BMW because the 2024 model is gonna be it's gonna be like 80 90 I want the two-year-old one it's gonna be like 2023 or 2022 because it's almost the same thing it might have 40,000 miles on it but you know what it's it keeps telling me to turn right turn left but I keep missing the turn Okay, I'll turn right onto Hudson Street. Thank you. Thank you, Google Maps. So, instead of getting a brand new one for 90000 I'm frugal. I will be, I will get the one that's 40000 40, on, like, Facebook Marketplace or from, like, a used dealer. It'll still be pretty new. Don't get me wrong. It won't be a used clunker. But it won't be brand new from the dealer. I have this thing about dealers where cars just cost so much and they depreciate so hard right when you... Oh, I've got to go right. Looks like I'm going back. Back up town. Oh, because I'm... Yeah, because I'm going the wrong way now. Okay. I have to make another right. Um, so... Yeah, this whole thing with the dealer... I feel like I can save 40000 for a rainy day if I just get the car that looks exactly like it. They didn't change much from the 2022 to the 2024 model. I'm sure there's little tiny updates here and there. Um, but, you know... I can live without them. I can enjoy the very much better, more modern, nicer version of what I have without needing the brand new. Oops. Okay, I get why it keeps telling me to. Because there are buildings here. West. Turn right onto Green. Oh, there we go. Okay, up ahead I'm going to make a left and I'm going to be on the West Side Drive headed down towards Battery Park. And we'll look at the amazing view with you guys together. Turn west. Then turn left again. Okay, got it. Thank you. So Google is in my helmet. This is like, I'm like high tech. I'm like, uh, 
renaissance man right now i've got the whole thing set up good i feel uh, pretty comfortable i'm not going so fast that i'm risking hurting myself or anyone else but i'm going fast enough where i think train or car would not have gotten me here much more efficiently than this so this is cool empire state is that this block no i'm gonna keep going google Hey, I was just saying I had Google in my head, and now I have Google in my face. Wow. What an awesome looking building. I wonder if they have all the bouncy balls and stuff in there, like that you see like how the workers are being treated so good. Gave him the hand signal, he gave me the go ahead. And uh, safely proceeded. Okay. Ooh, police officer standing on the middle of the island. I wonder what he wants. Is he looking for people on motors, motorized thingies to give tickets to? Oh, he's he pulled over that bus. That bus is getting it. Oh, no, he didn't pull it over. It looks like it crashed. I see some front end damage there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me try to zoom in right there. Oh, heaven help us. Oh, God help us. Um, Yeah, so... No motor vehicles, e-bikes, or scooters. Really? Okay. I hope I don't get a ticket. I'm just going to cruise through here and hope for the best. I feel like I've been here a lot. You know what? Should I go out with the cars? Last time I came on a group ride to this area, we did not use this bike path. We actually did use the car path. Will I be putting myself at risk? I have darkness bot on. It will beep if I overspeed. You know what? I'm going to go for it. I'm going to exit on the next. Hold on. Let me see. Are there a lot of people with scooters on? Let me see. Okay, this guy's got an electric scooter. Uh, these guys are all electric biking. I've heard of people getting tickets on this road, so I won't be terribly shocked, disappointed, or surprised if I do. But at the same time, I kind of just want to have fun and move quick. Cars, please spare me today. Please let me live. And I'm going for it. Okay, so what would I do with the other 250,000? 40,000 goes to a nice car. And then another 20,000 on an also nice car, but that isn't so loud and zoom zoomy. So 60,000 on two cars. So I have like the everyday car and the fun car. Because the fun car, you want to keep it in good shape and not drive it to the grocery store and everywhere every day. But the, uh, the zoom zoomy car, you want to take it on journeys and things like that. So you want to be careful. I'm kind of on the west side drive right now. I feel a little weird being on here by myself, but so far so good. Just hoping for the best here. I don't know how fast I'm going. I can't see my screen, but I'm really hoping that darkness bot beeps in my helmet if I uh, go too fast. I'm using my hand signal. I think cars are kind of giving me space. Thank you guys, if you are. And the... the the camera stick is kind of like acting like a sail, like a rudder, the way uh, Marty described. So if I like wave it around, I can feel things getting a little bit uh, haywire. Let me speed up a little bit and stop talking so much. Thank you to the cars who are giving me room. They're like, what is this guy doing? And I'm just like, I don't know. Um, looks like I'm almost at Battery Park though, so I'm excited. Look at the view around here. Just monumental, large business building structure. Yeah, I wouldn't have been able to go like this in the bike lane, that's for sure. Because there's people and bikes and cars, uh, not cars, just a little crazy up there. But this definitely gave me the room and speed I needed to move. Whoa, look at all that. Look at the glass towers. Modern man, huh? This has like, got to be one of the most modernistic areas in the world in terms of road and capacity and cool building. A lot of lawyers, offices, lawyer firms are here, a financial center, it's financial technology center. I mean, look at this, really luxury housing, living. You know, I was like talking about 4,700 in taxes and a million dollar apartment. These guys would just scoff at that. I mean, these guys living here who own $9 million, $10 million apartments, paying 10, 20,000 a month in taxes, scoff. They don't want to live out in the suburbs 30, 40 minutes away and drive through traffic to get here. They want to live right here where they can walk to work or something or ride a little scooter to work or maybe an EUC. 
for the more advanced thinking ones. Yes, <laughs> a self compliment on the go. Excuse me. I really need that mirror on my wrist to see behind me. Okay, I'm gonna exit here. Yeah, I think I'm good here. Oh, he told me to keep going. Okay, um, yeah, that's cool. So, I'm here. Battery Park is right up ahead. Let's see what this place is made of. I haven't been here in a while. The last time I came here, I was going to Staten Island. But I didn't really get to appreciate the views or the scene or anything. I just uh, went straight to the ferry and I took the train and it was a very... Yep. Somebody was honking. I think they were trying to get my attention. Um, so there you go. This is what it takes to go from uh, Upper East Side, Manhattan to Battery Park. You just had a real-time journey and experience. No cuts, no edits, and just a ride and chat. Um, I have $180,000 left to talk about before I let you go. So we're not done yet. Stay right there, mister. Let's see how we're doing on time. Oh, I wouldn't know. I'm going to go back out onto the street because the sidewalks are busy and crowded and packed. Okay, so here we go. Um, itch my eye. Okay. Wow, my glove is like uh, so big. I was expecting like a nice little fine tip finger to scratch my itch, but it was like a whole big glove of leather. Ooh, wow, there's like a big crowd in there. I think I came at the right time. Okay, I'm not gonna turn right just yet, like Google said. In fact, I would love to turn Google off now because uh, I think I'm done with needing directions. Thank you, Google. I'll pull out the phone and stop Google in a second. For now, though, I'm just going to try to figure out a way to safely... So, by the way, if you're ever going to Staten Island on the ferry, that's the ferry station. The ferry station right back there. I do remember that. And this is like Battery Park in there. So, that's where you can see the river. And uh, it's like more space. A place where you can play. If there are cops in there, which I predict that there will be, I may have to get off and walk the wheel for a bit just so that I don't get myself... In trouble I don't have the capacity to uh, absorb any fines if I can avoid it and uh, I actually just took a huge financial loss the other day from a terrible scam I got caught and it was nearly a robbery it was in person I'll save that story for another video I'll tell you about it soon because it did just happen to me yesterday and I'm still a little bit traumatized by the whole event um, I don't even know how I feel about sharing it because just embarrassing and terrible but anyway tune in for that one and this video, the positive video of what I would do with a million dollars, a million point twenty-five, and uh, this is more of this is more my speed. Um, okay, so hundred eighty thousand dollars left over. I've got two fancy cars. I've got. Uh, can't go from here or no? Okay. Okay. Thank you. I was pointing to the cop saying, "Can I go right here?" He said, "Nope, go that way." Um. Anyway, hundred eighty thousand dollars remaining. What am I doing with that? Okay, so you know $5,000 is getting sectioned clean right off to go into a brand new Veteran Lynx with all the bells and whistles. And huge shout out to Rob from Jersey in the comments and on Facebook uh, for his amazing Veteran Lynx, which is coming out so cool. He keeps me updated, sends me pictures and videos of how it's looking, and I am shocked. Rob, that, I've told you this already directly, but that Lynx is looking bar none like a straight up mighty machine. Um, so keep up the great work. I wish you safe riding, and shout out to all the veteran Lynxes out there and all the people souping up their Lynxes with cool, awesome accessories. Um, but Rob, wow, that thing looking great look him up people if you haven't i know he's sharing videos i know he's in the process of getting some videos together and i know he might have shared a little something on facebook already i think i've seen something there if i'm not mistaken um or maybe i can put a screenshot right here right here on the screen just a photo i'll check with rob first and in the editing if i manage to get through that type of grueling detail I'll put a photo of Rob's beautiful, excuse me, 
This is the part where I walk, I think. Um, yeah, check out Rob's. Thank you. Check out Rob's awesome veteran links. Doesn't that look cool? Give Rob a huge hand in the comments if you can, if you want to. <laughs> um, sorry to put you on blast, though, Rob, if, uh, if you didn't want me to do that too late. But maybe if you say, no, I won't have the picture, you'll just see my hands swirling. Hey, I'm just mixing. Mixing the paint, people. What? Okay, 180,000 left. 5,000 goes to a veteran lynx. No question. That would have been first, but that was the obvious thing, and I didn't want to just go straight to the goodie. But I would buy all the bells and whistles, maybe even a bunch of new gear. 5,000 seems like nothing when you're talking about 180,000 to spend. So 4,000 and change would go to the wheel, and the rest would go to a bunch of stuff that you attach to the wheel. Um, a lot of cool things you can do with the wheel. And safety gear. I'm just, like, addicted to cool safety gear. Thank you. Pardon me, man. Um, look at all these people waiting online to go. I guess I should have checked what it said back there. Like, what are people waiting for? Maybe I can ask someone. Hello. What is this line for? No? What's the line for? What are you guys waiting for? No? What are you waiting for? What's the line for? No? Oh, a boat ride? Yeah. Oh, got it. Thank you. Everyone was just looking at me like I was saying something offensive. They were like, how dare you? <laughs> I'm like, what's this line for? They're like, don't you worry about it, sir. Don't you worry about any of it. Okay? Um, anyway, I guess maybe they were kind of like, whoa. All that safety gear. The safety gear makes the whole thing more dramatic. You know, if I was just riding around in a t-shirt, it would kind of be like, you're good. Thank you. It would kind of be like, okay, well, he's riding a wheel. But when you have all this armor on, they're like, oh, my God, grab your kids. A crazy armored knight from the future or the medieval future or something that's, that's coming to run us over. And, and, and uh, okay, it looks like everything's closed. What's going on here? I guess they're con doing construction. On Battery Park, maybe if I keep going around, I can finally get to the river's edge, but so far I cannot. Sorry, I have failed you. Viewers, I promised you a skyline view, and I'm coming up short. Okay, $175,000 remaining. Am I just going to buy $175,000 worth of wheel to put in my big, new, expensive, fancy garage? Of course not. What do, I, what do you think I am? I'm not frivolous. I told you, I'm frugal. I'm frugal. I'm uh, spend thrifty. I'm kind of, I'm conscientiously aware of my financial uh, obligations. <laughs> yes. Okay, so the 175000 now that would go into my dream project. It's a project I've been on and off with, working towards for over a decade. And, uh, and that is an online learning platform that exceeds the expectations of the global public and is free for all the classes of the world, for all the people of all socioeconomic classes to access, and is so good in quality that even the rich people value it um, as much, if not more, than all of the paid options they have but yet it's still free to everyone to use equally with equal access to all the learning content. The learning content is fun and colorful and engaging for the younger age groups, and it's uh, detailed and organized and focused for the older learning groups, and it's a really a full package system that integrates uh, mentors and mentees relationships digitally uh, where people can give you feedback if and when you go down that route and it's got lots of autonomous learning videos games interactive features and it's got um, live features for in the classroom for live feedback for teachers and uh, professors and doctors and anyone else to see what students are doing in real time and redirect them and uh, give them um, corrections and Whatever uh, happens in the classroom is enhanced using this incredible website slash app. And this app system, I already have a lot of ideas on the details of how it works and how it looks and the appearance and some of that, but it's just such a huge project to flesh out. And I don't even know that $175,000 
would be enough to bring it into fruition but I know that would that it would be enough to get started with graphic designers um, uh, software engineers financial management and counseling and fundraisers and a whole team of people would need a little money to get this thing started but I figure that once it gets started and it starts as a small product product that generates income that can help it grow itself shortly thereafter so that's my point of view and this this system by the way like I said is completely free in my mind and is totally accessible to anyone in the world who has a tablet phone or internet access and uh, it's flexible kind of like YouTube if you have slow internet it still works it just throttles down the quality well same thing with this the faster your internet the more the quality goes up the slower your internet you still get the core value and you get still get the main features but it just throttles the quality down a little bit and so that is my vision for the future and I would invest that $175,000 entirely into that in the most frugal, high-value manner that I can get, high-value return that I can get um, approaching this project. Uh, I would do as much of it by hand as I can. I have uh, extensive skills in uh, graphic design and infographics and information graphic production and video making and riding this wheel. So if somehow riding a wheel can help with this, then I'm in. I'm ready to contribute in the highest capacity allowable. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I got a little off track there. But, oh, here we go. I can't go down these stairs. I don't have a suspension wheel. But see, you see why I need a Lynx? You see now? You understand, people? I always poo-poo uh, um, suspension wheels. I've, I've called them gimmicks and stuff in the past, and... You know what, it's, they're starting to grow on me a little bit, especially since now there's more power behind these wheels. But when I had the S18 from King Song, it was like, I felt like there was no power and so on. And I'm not going to get too deep into the suspension wheel thing though. But I will tell you that I won't object to having a great suspension wheel. And make sure you tune into my other video where I test out and review the King Song S22, which is a high performance medium to high performance suspension wheel first time i've ever tried a medium to high performance suspension wheel and i liked it uh but tune into the video for more details of what i thought about it okay i'm finally by the river i'm gonna go over there so i can start so i can start like the route from the beginning i hope i don't offend people because i'm on my wheel but it's a risk i'm willing to take for now and i'll be extra cautious of people on foot Oh, there were stairs here. That's why I didn't go down there. You know what? Oh, there's a ramp. Can I go around and go in there? I don't know. I'm going to walk my wheel down these stairs. I'm going to do a little quick check down there. And uh, and then I'll, I guess I'll ride it and I'll get it back up the stairs. Yeah, I don't ride my wheel down curbs, ledges, stairs, or anything else because it's a big, heavy, clunky Sherman. And I've broken my rim before, and I don't want to do that again. Hey, so. Okay, so I, I thought he was talking to me, but he has headphones on. Get over yourself, pal. Not everyone's talking to you. Sorry, guys, I'm just yelling at myself. Okay, here we go. Uh, mounting. Beautiful area. Look at these rocks. I guess they're like, we're not going to eliminate these rocks. We're going to artistically integrate them into the landscaping here and it'll be a foundational look it'll be something that you wouldn't find in your average customization of modern uh seating areas but rather um, uh, an intertwinement of nature and modern aesthetics combined uh i feel like i'm gonna run out of batteries soon i hope it's not staticking up you know what i'm gonna swap batteries momentarily shortly i'm gonna be swapping batteries because you know what? I've got extra mics. I've got extra batteries for the camera. I'm equipped and ready. I've been learning. I've been getting smarter. I've been getting better at this. So you know what? There's going to be lots of riding, lots of recording. Mwahahaha. Okay, can I go down these stairs as well? I guess I should. I guess I should take it all the way. So that when I go to the other side of Battery Park, I can say I started from the very, very beginning. Look at these cool wooden benches. Okay, I'm going to finally just go around on my wheel and see what's going on there. Okay, 
Here we go, the very edge of civilization, the bottom of Manhattan. Manhattan is an iconic island on a global scale, and I have just traversed it from the northern side of it, not all the way at the top, but pretty far up there. And now I'm on the very bottom southern tip, looking at what I can only assume is Brooklyn, downtown Brooklyn to be specific. And if I look this way, I can see the Manhattan skyline or part of it from the southern tip, even though I'm on the tip. If I was in Brooklyn, which I will be soon, make sure you tune in for that video. If I was in Brooklyn looking over here, then I would see this. Let's try to remember this part, the, the Bergula Pier segment, so that if I ever go over there, you can uh, say, oh, there was another video where we were at that part. Okay, um, awesome stuff. Look at that cool red house thingy over there. What is that, like a courthouse or something? Whew, no docking. There's a sign right there. No docking. Yes, no boats or whatever. All right, folks. We've done it. We're in the bottom of Manhattan. Um, let's uh, let's get to back to the route, to the path. I have a little bit of stairs to go up. I don't like to spin my wheel against surfaces because it, it scrapes tread off the wheel, off the tire. But right there, I was able to do it smoothly. But on the stone stairs, which are smoother than the wood, I may have to actually turn the wheel off and guide it and lift it. So I may do that. If I do, I'm not going to shut off the video. So just bear with me and be patient. I keep looking at the camera. I expect it to cut off, but I still see the red light blinking. And as for the mic, I don't really know when it's low. Ooh, if I go up these stairs, it'll be less stairs. Just these little short stairs right here. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Looks like I can then ride down there from where I came from, instead of going up that bigger. I'm gonna try, let's see. Hello, thank you. Cool dog, Beagle. Okay, looks like I got it. Yeah. I'm kind of lifting and pushing at the same time. Guys, don't scrape your tire tread. I feel like when you have the tires spin out against the surface, it like shaves off hundreds of miles worth of tread. So I try not to do that anymore because when I did it before on my first tire, I noticed the tread would disappear so rapidly. So rapidly. Um, I'm not going to go up on that black thing, but look at it. It's cool. It's like a place to get a higher point of view. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, Beagle is having poopy time. Don't look. Uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> dog people are like, it's just dog poop, but people who've never had a dog like me are like, oh no, is it warm? Ah, sorry. <laughs> it's just what non-dog people think. But I love dogs. I love dogs' personalities and stuff. I just have never had one. Friends have had dogs, and I like playing with them. I'm like uncle. I'm like dog uncle. All the fun, none of the responsibility. Um, would I ever get one? Maybe if I had that huge house with the backyard, and I can build them a cool, awesome dog house with a bed in it and stuff. But dog in the house? I don't know. I'm not there yet. I'm not used to them. I get a little scared, nervous around them sometimes, just a little bit, but who knows, maybe one day. There's also other limitations, which I won't talk about right now, but um, dogs are cool. Man's best friend. That's my statement. Take it down. Okay. Um, yes. Where was I? Uh, okay. We were talking about something good here. Oh, yes. The 175000 being spent on the app that would change the world, the face of education. It would allow for people outside of the education system to receive a, a great, the greatest possible education without being in a formal education environment. Maybe you're past school age, maybe you're of school age, but there's poverty and other issues preventing you from having access to a good education. And then it would also provide people who are in formal education in school to enhance and improve their experience in school by having an all-in-one app that does so much for the teachers 
and the students. It lets them, it gives them plenty of content, original content, all built into that to study from. It grades stuff. It keeps track of your progress. Um, it allows communication between teacher and student. It uh, is gorgeous. It's well organized. It's so accessible. And it gives awards and badges. And it also sells merch and stuff like t-shirts and building blocks and cubes and things that you use with the app for some of them because some of the app features include um, LiDAR censoring, like virtual augmented reality, where it can help you learn tactilely as well with your hands, not just with your eyes and ears, but you can actually have like, um, invisible things that are not even on the table and it can ask you to sort them. And by looking at the screen, you're also sorting stuff by touching it and it responds to your touch. There's so much that can be done with technology right now for education. And it's just simply not being done. If you look at engineering, medicine, um, law, all the fields of the world, they're like phew, aerodynamics, everything, traveling, speed, car, technology is like phew, but for education, they're like, here's your 27 pound textbook, put it in your backpack and don't complain about a bulging disc, child, or else. And yes, you will carry it around all day, even when you walk up and down, it's like, what? The year is not 1901, people. The year is 2024 and the technology exists. Where are the developers? Where are the teachers? Where are the developer teachers that are combining in rooms with the most brilliant artists and uh, thinkers in the world saying education is our mission and no, we're not doing this for a $129 a year membership app that excludes 97% of the people who download it because they're like, what? I don't even know if it's a good app or not. What? Do a membership and then it automa it doesn't automatically cancel and I get stuck with the bill if I don't cancel in seven days. I don't want to take that risk. There's plenty of free apps out there. I'm not going to get roped down to some mediocre app for lots of money when I can get something pretty good for free. Yes, that's, that's what users are thinking. That's what parents, that's the parent thought process uh, I think when they're dealing with um, their kids, when teachers are dealing with their students, I think it's just, where's the good free app? I mean, there's ways to do it too, where you don't need to load it with spam and advertisement. That part I'm not going to reveal here on this tape for now, but I have a good way where it can be totally free to the user and the developers and all the artists and people can still get paid and paid handsomely. And the CEO, ooh, me, me, me can get paid super handsomely. Maybe I'll get that $2 million check that I've been dreaming of. Um, because I have the deep in-depth vision. I've wrote over 50 pages of planning. I've created screenshots using graphic software, not actual software engineering. Oh, it started recording on my, I heard the camera vibrate and I looked over to see if I should continue recording. And, uh, it just started recording again by itself. So that's cool. Cause it cuts off at 29 minutes. I guess that's just to save what you've recorded so far rather than losing the whole 40 minute video uh, if something goes wrong i can uh, i can get on board with that i can jive with that so yeah 29 minutes you know what i do i end up just combining the two videos together so it's still one video for me but it's just two separate video files i have to put together and that's not terribly cumbersome because i do some editing like minor amounts of editing anyway mostly using imovie or luma fusion or Adobe Premiere. So not a problem to combine a couple of videos together and sometimes add photos or screenshots of stuff on the screen uh, while you're watching. But for the most part, I just adjust colors, brightness, other setting, maybe uh, make sure frame rate and bit rate is high so that the video looks gorgeous and cool. Look at this awesome part, huh? I bet these towers mean something. I bet it's some kind of like Illuminati structure that means like this is the portal the stargate into the ancient wisdom and one is jagged and represents man's follies and the smooth spirally one represents the human nature biology i don't know something like that i like that stuff i read dan brown books and he talks about stuff like that statue of liberty over there oh Ver verrazano bridge down there one of the longest bridges in new york city i'm gonna Tune into the video where I go to um, Staten Island on the Verrazano Bridge. Guys, I'm not even missing one battery cell on the Sherman. So shout out Sherman and all that range, okay? I'm sure it's not at 100%. It's not even at 90. Well, 
Maybe it's around 90%. I'll check the Darkness Bot app, but I don't want to do it now because I have gloves on. And I don't want to take the gloves off. Let's keep riding. I don't, you know, if you watch a lot of my videos, you know that I don't like to be stationary. I like to always be in motion. There are rare moments where I stop and interview someone or chat or show something, but if I stand too long, I feel like the video starts to lose its luster. Let us always keep moving. The motto of the modern EU seer. So yeah, with the app thing again, I think I can wrap up, wrap up what I was saying, hopefully in sync right with the amount of time. Ooh, another Port Authority ferry to Battery Park City. I guess this is where the ferry drops off passengers that are coming from Staten Island. I could be wrong about that. I have no idea. Oh, but it looks like it can go in there. Security notice, authorization, blah, blah, blah. Millions of birds. Okay, fine. Mm, this is nice. Maybe I should do a review in here. Tune into my other video where I will do a review, a 10,000 kilometer review of this veteran Sherman, which I should be there soon. I, I think I've got like another thousand kilometers to go. And I in miles, that should be like, I don't know, 6,000 miles or something. That's right. Tune in. Tune into all of my videos where you will learn and have fun simultaneously. Okay, so to wrap up what I was saying about the great learning pro the great learning app of our time, which will change the face of education as we know it. Um, yeah, so... Uh, oh, here's another important feature of it. You can either just use it as like a user, a guest user, you don't have to log in, you have access to all the worksheets and games, and you can do like standalone, and you can use standalone features and, and parts of the app, or you can create an account and log in. You don't have to create an account to log in. I hate, as a user, I hate like where, oh, if I don't log in and make an account, even if it's free, I'm like, huh, can I just browse? Can I just walk around like Best Buy like without buying anything? Yeah, you can browse. If it doesn't need tracking features like a grading system or something or some way to keep monitor your progress, then it's fully accessible. That's our motto. It's just, hey, get in there and play math games, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and so on. They're interactive and they're fun and kooky and animated. And Or here's some worksheets because you have classes to teach tomorrow. And these are the best worksheets on the entire internet. In fact, we have thousands of worksheets for every grade level for every subject that's right oh you like these worksheets oh you want to print them in bulk but paper is expensive and you care about the environment well our patented printing methodology system allows you to print eight i'm sorry four pages for the price of one that's right you can print a booklet where it combines every four pages into one sheet of paper how well, the two front, the two page, the page turns into half a page, like a booklet, and you get two pages on one side and two pages on the other, and it automatically coalesces the pages so that when you fold the booklet, which has to be in page number factors of four, so four, eight, 16, four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, and so on, and then when you fold it and staple it, with a long stapler, by the way, so it can be binded like a real book, and you can even print the cover with hard copy paper, like uh, cardstock paper, then you actually get these cool homemade booklets, which is just stacks and stacks of worksheets. And you're saving tons of paper, and students can hang on to them for the week, and they can have assigned pages in there for each day. You can do it by time or by subject. You can uh, mix and match. You can plug and play pages into the app and it will combine them and automatically do the hard part, uh, the hard part of coalescing the pages so that when it prints, it knows. Because if you've ever tried that, there's a whole weird thing about page one and then page uh, 14, page 12 on the back. So it's on that same page, just on the other half on the back side. And then it's got to do like the 13th page and the second page. So it's a real nightmarish process unless it's done correctly and you're used to it and you know how to order everything, which I do. Um, but if you built it into an app, it can be a user-friendly process, which I wouldn't have to even be needed at that point. It could just work. Oh my God, what a dream app. What a dream scenario. A full service free learning app that has everything from digital to old school paper. What, you can order workbooks too, traditional old style full page workbooks? 
with all the content, same content as what's available on the web, you're just paying us for the printing and for the um, materials. What? What, you want to represent us by buying hats and t-shirts? What, you want to get prizes? What, you want data tracking millions of users demographically and uh, based on location and based on uh, all kinds of other demographics for each user? What, you want to organize learning to that degree where you have this new system, this new global platform that can actually poach the most intelligent people on the planet? And what, you're a, a mom or a dad who has time on the side to earn a master's level education? Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, hello. <laughs> people are nice. Um, and you want to actually get a degree from this platform, which in time will be recognized as a legit degree because of how rigorously and how well it teaches and tests and sees the user while working to ensure that everyone is verified and has verification steps, everything from identification to even social security, if you really want to get that serious. If you want to, all optional, of course, but you basically become like a platinum style user who can really, you can perform heart surgery off this thing. Why isn't this a thing? Why aren't people becoming doctors autonomously on their own learning platform that's free for everyone to use? It will be one day. And with my $1.25 million, it will be possible. And I know you think, oh, hey, only 175000 You don't need all that, $1 million. But yes, but I want to live in peace and comfort and enjoyment while I'm working on all this. I need my needs to be met so I can focus on the greater goals here and these things. I need the tools and materials required, don't I? What do you think this is? I'm not a machine. I need a Lynx. Okay? So just stop. Stop with your petty arguments. Oh, look at this person just training, huh? What a cool area. So you're telling me I can just come here anytime and get on that soccer field and train myself? Or train with someone? Probably train myself. I don't know anyone. Um, wow, more incredible views. Look at this pier sticking out into the water and another one over there. Woof. I haven't been here. I've been to some parts of this area, but I have not really scoped this area out like this. And I'm a New Yorker. And I'm, uh, I'm not ashamed to say I've never been down here, but I'm delighted that old Sherma was able to take me. Whoa, look at this amazing sailboat. What? I just call it a sailboat because of the ropes. It's probably a yacht. Why would it be here? I don't know. Maybe it's a business, a home. I don't know. But this is like a docking area or something, right? So what are they doing? Oh, whoa, look at an anvil with a huge rope. Ah, multiple anvils, multiple huge ropes. I don't know much about boats, but I know that that's how you keep them safe and docked. And look, it has a big balloon barrier thing down there, so that if the boat bumps against the dock, it doesn't like fall apart and get destroyed. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I mean, if I had a wheel, I can come down here. I wouldn't have to walk miles and take the train just to get to this spot. If I had a wheel, if only I had a wheel. Ha ha, just kidding. Anyway, um, yeah, I can put my wheel down right there. Oh, cool, look at this, a pass-through. Oh, for strollers and stuff, I guess. Or for, like, people like that who have, like, a thing, like a cart full of, like, training materials and whatnot. Okay, I'm going to keep going and keep exploring the rest of this area. I'm literally floored by how Oh, volleyball sand? What? Right here on the edge of Manhattan? Why isn't this place packed? Oh, yes, because it's the middle of a work day. But I'm sure, like, on weekends and stuff, you can't even get a spot in there. Oh, my God, mini golf? This doesn't look like paid stuff. This looks like public stuff. Like, just anyone can just walk. Oh, no, there's, a, there's like, a hut in there. I'm sure there's an office, and you need golf clubs and ball uh, golf balls, and so you probably have to pay for that one. But everything else looks like it's free. That's cool. Oh, my God, a swing area? Guys, viewers, if you're around this area or you can get to this area, bring your kids here. Get on these swings. Use this cool stuff, a rock climbing wall over there. I mean, this will just expand your horizons being in a place like this. You will want to seize the world. You will have aspirations and ambitions that grow beyond asunder. Look at this cool fish thing. Look, you can climb up, slide down. 
Okay, I'm just like getting awed by everything here now. Let me calm down. Let's just say, oh, look at this nice park. I'm sure this would be lovely for the children. Moving on now. I'm not impressed. A boat! I mean, a boat. Oh, look at this stuff. Oh, pictures and stuff showing over the years how this place got... Oh my God, that's cool. I gotta show you that. So these old busted up warehouses is probably what used to live down here before they poured what I can only assume is millions, if not billions of dollars, making this place so gorgeous. I have trouble decluttering a room sometimes. These people de decluttered a whole uh, island's edge. Okay, yeah, so cool. If they can do it, you can do it too. Take your cues from these guys. Oh, wow, look at this. Cars parked over there. Big ugly warehouses where they probably used to make stuff back before Manhattan was a million dollars per square foot. <laughs> yes, I like using hyperboles. Okay, a cool restaurant called City Vineyard. Brunch, lunch, and dinner. I don't think anything in there is free. Um, okay, what else? More stuff. More pier stuff. Okay, I don't know how far down I'm going to go as far as that way. But so far it looks like I'm kind of wrapping up the tour on this side. That looks like it takes you either around the southern tip of Manhattan and back uptown towards the... I don't know, West Side? Oh yeah, that's West Side Drive right there. Okay, yeah. So I'm not gonna do the whole West Side of Manhattan, but this Southern area here is definitely fair game. So I'll probably cut the video off soon from here, right after these messages from our sponsors. Hey, potential sponsors. If you would like to give me money for sponsorship and promotion, please reach out to me in the description of my channel where you can see where I bought all this fancy gear and where you can contact me, reach out to me by emailing me and uh, making me offers or something or giving me a contract to review. I don't know how it works. I don't have any sponsors. But if I get lots of views and um, engagement, I think they call it engagement. If this becomes cool and popular and a place to advertise, maybe you can help me make it bigger by letting me tell the world about your awesome products that's how it works right i know that much i'm not a huge business savvy minded type of person but um i don't think i would be averse to making deals with big companies that love what they're seeing so hit me up people and that includes small companies too let me know and uh if you just have cool things you want me to review I don't know. Let me know either. Let me know also. I'll, I'll think about that. I mean, I don't really do a lot of reviews on this channel. I feel like there's plenty of people doing reviews and they're doing a great job at it. I could jump in there if I have extensive background and experience on a particular product. And if I have like additional information and insight to offer on those products that people ha aren't really talking about. But otherwise, like, I mean, I guess, you know, when you see, when you're looking at potentially buying a product, you do look up several reviews about that item to see what multiple people are saying. So there is room for me to do a little bit of reviewing. Um, so I'll consider it, especially the items I really love. I'm not just going to go out and spam reviews and do reviews on every little thing I've ever bought, unless it's extremely lucrative and can help me get that $2 million check. Okay. Um, the last thing I want to talk about with this $2 million thing or $1 million thing is where and how can I get that? I don't really know. I'm really not sure. But if I want it badly enough, I do believe in tele, teleopathy, tele, teleogenics. Humans are teleological creatures. Yes, humans are teleological creatures. I'm a human. And I believe in uh, teleology, where if you believe in something and want something strongly enough and think about it often enough, you will find the way to that something. So let this be me planting my flag in wanting this okay i truly want this i think this want this need of mine for the 1.25 million for the house the cars the links and the business which you get i guess you might be able to call it non-profit no it's it's profit because it's going to grow rapidly um but it's also a humanitarian venture really Yes, yeah, so I think because that app really does aim to change the world, that there will be some wind behind its sails 
and that people will come together from around the world with me or perhaps without me to make it happen. But I really want to be part of the process because I want that house and the cars and the wheel and some other stuff maybe like good food and who knows what else but you get the gist um but maybe my charisma my vision my detail orientedness my um graphic design prowess my uh long deep thinking about this subject for over a decade will be of value and i will be the guy i will be the guy at the helm maybe not top helm because i know that big projects um can require a lot of acumen and tons of experience in so many areas that I don't necessarily um, have under my belt because of my own background. I have extensive background in other things like uh, riding a wheel and being a cool guy. <laughs> um, by the way, I just changed. I took a pause for a second. You're probably not aware of it because the video is just continuing fluidly, but I took about two minutes to swap out the batteries for the camera for the first time it officially died i've officially gone a third round now of recording a single video i've never done that i don't know how long this video is going to be it's probably going to be very long um but worth it i think in my opinion i feel good about this video it's been an awesome adventure so far and uh i also changed out my microphone the whole set because once you start recording for like an hour and change the microphone starts to lose power and it gets staticky it doesn't just say hey i'm out of juice just change me out it keeps working quote unquote like the lights are on and everything but nobody's home so now i take it upon myself to change out the mics when i've been using them for a while you kind of just have to guess and my guess my educated guess is about one hour okay do i go on that pier no because it's locked also, it uh, looks dangerous. I feel like I could lose my wheel down there. No thanks. I need my wheel. I don't have... Well, I have a couple other wheels, but uh, this is my Sherman. This is my bread and butter. Hello. This is my uh, stake in the game. Okay, guys. Um, I'm not going to go down. I think that's upper west side. Yeah, I think that's now going up the west side drive. If I keep going that way. And that will have to be a video for another day. So I'm going to take the nearest exit out of this area. I don't want to check out all the piers along the west side. I do want to, but not today. I want to start heading north. I want to start heading uptown. So it looks like I can exit from here. I love that there's stairs and seating areas here. But then you can also just go this way. Like on a ramp style exit. And right out onto the street. This area is so well designed. I'm literally blown away. I'm not a big west side guy. I haven't been on the west side too much in the recent past. So I'm glad I'm getting to see it now. It looks so good. Um, folks, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. Let's help the algorithm make this video a reality. Uh, well, it is a reality, but let's help make this video a success and possibly have it reach the eyes and ears of someone or some people who can help me make these lavish dreams a reality. And if you have feedback for me or ideas on how I can develop this great dream of mine, please let me know in the comments. Thank you in advance for all your comments. Thank you for your likes, subscribes, and shares. Thank you for your minutes spent with me on my journey, on our journey together. Thank you for being so kind. I appreciate all of you. I wish you happiness, joy, health, success, all the good stuff in life. And if you need anything from me, you let me know. I'm always happy to help. And I'll look forward to seeing all of you again on the next one. Have a great day. Goodbye. Folks. Please don't forget to check out my channel description and video description for information on where I purchased all these cool items. Thanks again.